as um, uh, the, the head of the CPS, which is something that, Star that Kid Starver wants to boast about a lot and talk about a lot and how his commitment to justice and blah, 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 and law and order and all the usual fucking buzzwords, um, he, while he was the head of um, the Crown Prosecution Service, he insulated the M uh, MI5 and MI6 officials uh, from prosecution for torture. Now, yes, MI5 and MI6 were heavily involved in the CIA's extraordinary rendition torture program. And they interrogated many suspects. They were directly involved in, in directing the techniques used and the questions asked. And, of course, with torture, the person who sets the question sets the answers. Uh, which is quite interesting. Um, they were also involved in personally, MI, MI6 was involved in rendering um, uh, quote unquote terror suspects. And the the police were, were in, British police were investigating them. And they managed to, despite stonewalling and, and this kind of conspiracy of silence, uh, unearth an enormous amount of evidence, like thousands and thousands of pages of evidence of implicating MI5 and MI6 officials in very serious crimes. Um, this included faxes directly sent by an MI6 official to security services in Libya who were being used to torture a suspect the British had rendered. Yeah, giving them direction on how this person should be tortured and what he should be asked, which I mean, what could be more smoking gun than that? And a decision was made at the CPS not to prosecute them. And then after this happened, uh, Starmer went to the leaving drinks party of the MI5 chief. Uh, so this is how British cover-ups happen. It's all very chummy. It's all based on what school you went to and what university you went to. Um, the, the He also um, was involved in keeping the bogus rape case against Julian Assange uh, now free at last. Um, the in Sweden running and was e email sent from the seat. Most of them have been destroyed, but there were it, it showed that the CPS was was pressuring the Swedes not to close the investigation, despite the fact it was well known that it had no substance. And they were saying, don't you dare get cold feet on us. Like, you know, come on, don't back down now. Uh, Starmer also flew to Washington, D.C. four times during this period. All records have been shredded. Uh, what could be more suspicious than that? But uh, what, what, th there is something more suspicious than that, which is that coincidentally, every file held on by the CPS on Jimmy Savile, a notorious C kind of industrial scale paedophile and necrophiliac, who was a considered a national treasure when I was a child. Little did I know I was his type. Um, like the the the. The, the 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 like it just it, it, the, on, he was on like on like satirical game shows and stuff. It's the horrific, and and this is the thing as well is that it it was well known that he was a paedophile necrophiliac by the media, by the BBC where he worked, by the NHS where he had like the the keys to like a morgue and like and, and like and and, and and a hospital for the disabled. Um, and and the British police knew, and many journalists knew, and boasted about the fact that they knew. Um, and then, so basically, in 2007, police were contacted by a number of women who came forward to testify that they were raped and, and harassed and assaulted by Savile when they were young uh, and when they were under the age of consent. And so he was asked by the police about the allegations. The investigation was shut down and never publicly acknowledged. And it was only after he died that this emerged. Now, fast forward to um, 2021. Um, it was, sorry, no, February 2022. During a parliamentary joust, the now former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson accused Keir Starmer of spending his time as CPS chief prosecuting journalists and failing to prosecute Jimmy Savile. Now, this ignited a major public firestorm where MPs from every party lined up to attack Johnson for making these comments. Journalists from The Guardian to The Sun um, attacked him for making these comments. There were fact-checking websites that stated this was flatly untrue. Um, there was a senior Downing Street staffer who quit 
because they claimed it was a disgusting libel and they couldn't possibly carry on their professional functions anymore. And then due to the pressure, Johnson retracted his comments and said, I'm very, very sorry. And like, you know, I, I didn't mean it. And it, it was not true. Um, actually, uh, Starmer was the head of the CPS when it was decided not to prosecute Sapple. Now, an, an, an official uh, inquiry um, uh, convened by Starmer into this, uh, which was written by his second in command. So, I mean, it's hardly be considered objective or fair. Um, it's still utterly damning of, of, of the CPS because it states that a CPS prosecutor uh, who was an extremely experienced rape specialist told police at an early stage, quote unquote, that they're not that they would not be inclined to prosecute these cases because they were relatively minor. So they considered the rape of children to be relatively minor. Now, um, the 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 inquiry report does um, take this lawyer to task for uh, appraising heinous crimes as um, uh, as not serious, and the, the explicitly stated Savile's uh, the accusation against Savile were far from trivial and represented a course of conduct against vulnerable women and young girls by a man in the position of trust. Um, the, uh, the 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 find the findings of the report nonetheless kind of whitewash things and state well if police and, pro and prosecutors had taken a different approach a prosecution might have been possible uh, and it, but it also states that, 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 that there's no evidence to suggest that the decision not to prosecute was um, uh, the result of any improper motive on the part of police or prosecutors and yet it also admits that yes the cps destroyed all material it held on savile um and what what records that they the the inquiry used to piece together this report were incomplete or contained inconsistencies which made it difficult to assess what had happened and it, it impossible to create with any certainty what the cps actually knew um and it also it's important to bear in mind that under CPS guidelines, these records are meant to be kept for five years. They weren't. They were destroyed in just one. So you've got to ask yourself, well, a decision to destroy these files was clearly taken at a high level. Yeah. So... In the high and as I understand from your reporting, the highest level of the judicial system at the time was Keir Starmer. Yeah. 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 So it's... It, it, is, it is a very interesting example of how protected Starmer is. And it's like, you see this now where it's like, we discussed this on the last show, or the show before last. He has had three years of unrelenting positive media coverage of like very slick Obama-style photos of him looking important and, st and powerful. And now you have all, all of it stating he's ready to be the next prime minister on the basis that the journalist writing the story decided. And you have these centrist journalists who are losing their minds about his election and saying that they're like crying whenever he speaks because it's so it's so beautiful that the adults are back in charge. We've now got this. We've now got this like really sens sensible centrist dad who's unaffected by issues of social injustice in power, being sensible and boring. Um, it's kind of similar to the hagiographic "Is Biden Clark Kent or Superman?" type reporting. Um, if you could just pull up this lot, I think that we'll close it. We'll close the show on this. But it's just like this is the this is the fucking where is it? <clears throat> Hang on, yeah, yeah. So if you could just scroll down to um, this is this is written. This is a Guardian article written. Oh, um, written by uh, a guy called Tom Baldwin, who was a a party advisor during the Blair years and the Brown years. So if you move down to, it's the third paragraph and it starts with at 9.59 p.m. Yeah. So I'm just going to read this in full because I think it's a it's a cheery note to end an otherwise rather bleak show. And we do, we're big on laughs here at Active Measures. Um, like, <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyway. <clears throat> At 9:59 p.m., this is on. This is this journalist Tom Baldwin's personal reflections of being in Starmer's, um, being in. No, it was it was a uh, it was a uh, it was the the election war room 
it was in the living room of a, of a house loaned to Starmer. Um, and uh, the, 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 Starmer and his family were gathered to watch the election results. Okay, so at 9.59 p.m., the countdown began. Starmer and his wife locked their bodies together. Vic's left arm stretched around his shoulders to clasp his left hand while he did the same to reach for her right. As Big Ben strikes 10, the exit poll is predicting a Labour landslide, intoned the BBC. Keir Starmer will become Prime Minister with a majority of around 170 seats. The man they were talking about wrapped both his arms around his wife to share an extravagant kiss. Then he reached out to his 13-year-old daughter. They embraced for a moment, but he jolted into a tighter, protective grip as he realised it was all becoming too much. I looked away and stared at the TV as it chattered on. The room suddenly felt hot, and not for the first time since I began writing Starmer's biography two years ago, I knew this was intruding on something very personal. Was he masturbating while he wrote this? Like, like, oh, no, God, no, it's like a serious question. It's like, I felt my trousers getting tighter. Like, it, it's so, it's like pornographic. It's so weird. It's, and this is, as you said, bang on the money as ever. This is a man who has the charisma of a block of wood. And you're getting, like, feeling like this surge of like sexual ecstasy watching him get excited over the fact that he's got a huge majority. <laughs> oh, God. Well, the next five years are going to be fun, aren't they? Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.